All right, hello everyone. So in this video, we're gonna go through about four or five different surface area problems just to practice finding the surface area of each of these figures here. So let's start with number nine. So this is a square pyramid. I know my base here is the square. Okay, and it's all going to a single point up top. So that's going to be a pyramid. Okay, so I know this side only asks for surface area, but we're going to, we're going to separate it. We'll do the lateral and then we'll just add on our base or bases. Uh, so the lateral area here would be everything except that square base. So it looks like we have four of these triangles here. Okay, so we have this triangle and then we have four of them going around. I, mean, I know they're all the same because the bases are all 10. That's why we need a regular polygon as our base. Okay, so I know a triangle is half base times height. Okay, so my base would be 10 and then the height would be the slant height here, so 10.3. Okay, so half base times height, and then we have four of them, right? So I'm going to multiply this by four. Okay, so remember, we could simplify them in advance if I want, because I know half of four is just two. Um, and I know half of that's just two. Two times 10 is 20. So it looks like we're going to have that 20 times the 10.3, or you could just type it all in one shot, and we should get about 206 here as my lateral area. Okay, for the surface area, then I just need to add in the base, which is side squared or 10 times 10, um, which is 100. So if I add in 100, we should get 306. And then we're a meter squared. So area is square units. So 306 should be my final answer for that one. Okay, so remember our formula for the pyramid. Uh, so basically the four triangles, as we saw, and then add on the square. Um, but this is for a square pyramid. If you have a triangle, just the area of the triangle, then you only have three triangle uh, faces. Um, so just adjust based on whatever pyramid you have. Okay, so for the cone, you could see here, a cone was basically, well, the circle's easy, just pi r squared. Um, but when we unfolded this triangular part, our formula we said was pi r l in purple there. Okay, so the circle should be easy. And then the only part you really need to memorize is pi r l. Um, so sort of like pi r h, but um, pi r l. Uh, L is the slant height. Okay, so pi, so my radius here is five. So pi, five squared plus pi, once again, five. Then the slant height, it looks like is 13. Okay, so remember L is the slant height. So make sure you have that slant height, which is different from the regular height of the pyramid. Okay, so the calculator will do most of the work here. Um, so let's go ahead and type this in. So we have pi, five squared plus pi, five, uh, 13. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have 282, and if the directions tell me nearest 100, so two decimal places, so 74. Okay, and we're in feet here, so feet squared will be my answer. Okay, so that they're pretty easy to, as long as you know the formula, it's pretty easy to substitute into that. Um, uh, sometimes if you are given the regular height, um, remember this is a right triangle here, you can see in red there. Um, so you're always able to use Pythagorean theorem if you need to find the slant height, but make sure you have the slant height. Um, because this would be 12 if you use Pythagorean theorem. So if I switch flip flop that, you would have to find that 13 on your own. Um, so just be careful using the slant height there. Okay, uh, circle, uh, sorry, sphere, I know is four pi r squared from our formula up there. So pretty easy formula to use. So four pi, my radius here is nine. So 4.9 squared. Um, and you can type down the calculator and then round that accordingly. Okay, let's look at number 14 to end off this video. Okay, so we have a cylinder. Okay, so remember a cylinder, we have the two circles here. Okay, so just pi r squared, and then we have two of them, so two pi r squared. Okay, and we said the middle part is a rectangle when we unfold it. Okay, so we said the height of the, when we unfold this, um, the height of the rectangle is the circumference of the circle. What if you unfold that? So that's two pi r is the circumference, and then the height of the rectangle will be the height or the width of the rectangle is the height of the cylinder. So that would be two pi r h, or we have our formula here. But that's where they came from, our two circle bases. And then this is that middle rectangle part when we unfolded it. Okay, so we need to substitute the r and the h here. So two pi, so my radius would be, so 20 is the full way across. So my radius would be 10, so two pi 10 squared plus two pi, once again, r is 10. And the height will be the eight, right? The height's whatever's connecting the two bases together. So that eight is connecting the two circles together. Um, okay, so two pi 10 squared 
and then we could add on the two pi, once again, 10 for the radius, and then eight for the height. Two pi r squared, two pi r h, adding together. So it looks like we have 1130. We're doing two decimals here, so 97. Okay, we're in centimeters here, so that'll be my answer here. All right, let's just do number 13. We'll, we'll have to type it in, but uh, when you have a rectangular base, I know this comes up a lot, um, or rectangular prism, these are all rectangles. So really, in, either any of these could be your bases, because the base, remember, has to be opposite and parallel each other, to, uh, whatever the base is. It has to have an opposite and parallel one. So all these rectangles have an opposite side that's congruent and parallel, right? So the front and back there, as I highlighted, you could also have the top and bottom. So if it doesn't tell you which one of the bases, um, we'll just find it, We'll just find everything here. It just asks for surface area anyway, but the lateral area um, could be whichever faces you choose. So if it doesn't specify, I just always do top and bottom as my bases. Um, so my bases here will, looks like we have 10 times eight, length times width. Okay, and we have two of them. So that'll be my top and bottom. If I look at the left and the right here, this would be what, 11 times eight. And once again, we have two of them. And then finally, we would have the front and the back. So the front one here and then the one in the back. Okay, so this would be what, 10 times this up and down one is 11. So 10 times 11. And once again, we have two of them. Okay, so you notice I wrote here, my rectangle prism is really just the different combinations of length, width, and height. So two of the LW, two of the WH, and two of the LH. So if you mix and match the LWH, length times width times height, um, if you want a formula, but basically you're adding up the six rectangles. Um, so using the 10, 8, 11. So 10, 11, 10, 8, and 11, 8 are the three different combinations and you have two of them. Um, so you do them separately and then add them all together. And then you should get a whole numbers in the decimals there. And that'll be your surface area there. All right. So I think that's a good mix of all the different shapes. So that will be all.